Hi guys, it is a smoky, good God, is it a smoke choked, hopefully soon to be rainy evening washing this shit out of the air down here outside of Doomsday Trailer here in the end times. It is a Thursday night, March 21st, 2024, and I think both of my batteries are drained on this camera. Don't know of this rant. So, uh, you know, I'm trying to, uh, I, I, I can go two ways with this rant, but I got some bad news for uh, some of you. I'm, I'm going to go the serious route. We're going to have one of these these rare serious rants. We're going to talk about alcohol tonight. Uh, our old friend alcohol. You notice you have you have probably how many times in your life have you seen me drinking a beer? I have never been a big fan of beer, except when I'm eating pizza. You have to have beer with beer. Uh, but when I'm not eating pizza. Not a big fan of beer. I don't know, I've never understood why this beverage became so popular, but believe it or not, <coughs> I have never been a fan of shots of tequila either. So the reason I'm not drinking a margarita is not because I'm out of tequila, but because I'm out of goddamn limeade to mix my tequila with. I'm too damn lazy to drive to the fucking store which doesn't have the fucking limeade half the time anyway. I'm too, I'm too worn out from a day of planet and nibbling to go chase down limeade and uh, so if my choice is between just you know knocking back uh, the, the tequila that would normally go in the margarita or drinking a beer I'm going to enjoy a rare beer. This is the Blue Moon Belgian White beer, which is pretty good. As I say, I, I I might have one beer a month. If I drink a 12 pack of beer in a year, I would be surprised. But maybe once a month, I do and, and enjoy a cold beer. So anyway, we're going. This beer is brought me to to this rant and a couple of things have as I mentioned uh, last night my buddy Michael Campy on medium.com uh, labeled me a, a foul-mouthed alcoholic and uh, I, I I'm assuming he was, he was just kidding but I, I honestly do not know if, I honestly don't know if, if I meet some technical definition of an alcoholic. And also what's been happening, I, I, I mentioned when I first got here, uh, back in November, this young woman, uh, well, no, well, she's 38, this uh, obnoxious, woman who would who would show up at eight o'clock in the fucking morning uh, drinking a beer and and and, uh, and then she would just be you know when I would see her at sunset she'd be fucking drunk and uh, good God uh, and, and so I, I kept her at a distance but I've noticed they in the past, maybe six weeks, an absolute total change in her demeanor. And so we visit at the, I, I don't see her in the morning anymore, uh, but she has a, a fucking little, she's a single mother and a, pushing her little kid around. So we usually visit for uh, a few minutes each night and and I just commented, as I said, you know, Donna, I said I can't help but notice there seems to be some change in your personality. And she looked kind of, she, she goes, you know, something like, say, you can actually notice. And I, and I said, I said, yeah, I said, it's a good change. I said, what's going on? And she said, I stopped drinking. 
that I finally uh, took, uh, you know, just took a hard look at myself in the mirror and at my life and, uh, and, and decided to stop drinking. So I, 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 you know, I congratulated her, blah, blah, blah. And, you know, the, and then, the, of course, the, the whole conversation came up that we've been, that we've actually been having off and on for the past couple of weeks in, in, in just short little segments. And obviously there's a major part of the story that I'm getting ready to share with you that I'm not sharing with this young woman, but I had, I, I, I've told her part of the story. Uh, about when I quit drinking at age 37 is when I hit the wall and I quit drinking. I did not have a drink for six years, I told her. And that six years uh, from age 37 to uh, about 43, five or six years, uh, right, right around six years though. Uh, it was on my 37th birthday is when uh, I, I hit the wall with, with my obvious alcoholism. And I'll get to that story in a minute, but basically, just a, a quick recap. Uh, you know, I was born in 1959. Uh, I, I, you know, I, like so many teenagers, you know, I, I was drinking pretty solid. Uh, by, by the time I was 16. So I, you know, by the time I was 37, I had been drinking uh, for over 20 years. Uh, so starting in the, the mid-1970s is when I started drinking. And as I mentioned, never took a hit of weed till I was 42. To this day, I've never had a line of cocaine, never uh, had a hit of acid, not counting the uh, hallucinogens that I did in 2008, the mushrooms and the ayahuasca and shit. I pretty much, between uh, at least until the age of uh, 42, I, I was 100% it was alcohol was was my only drug of choice and by the time the 1990s rolled around uh, I, I I was hitting the bottle fucking hard uh, you know seriously hitting the bottle I, I was called what I've heard termed a functional alcoholic a functional alcoholic. I still did not start drinking probably till about three in the afternoon. I I've never been a a daytime dream a daytime drinker. So even when I I was going full, you know, Hunter S. Thompson level of drinking in the nineties, it usually wouldn't start. Uh, at least till the middle of the afternoon, I could uh, certainly, and I, I was, I, I was never drunk uh, before 6 p.m. It was mostly a nighttime thing. You know, I could go out and and, and hold down a real estate career. Uh, it, the my, my alcohol never interfered ever. Uh, with, uh, with with any job I was doing. It never caused a problem on the job. Uh, never got a DUI, shockingly, in my entire life. Never got a damn DUI as, as much as I drove drunk. Uh, I, I've had like five bad wrecks in my life. Four of those bad wrecks, stone sober. I, I've only had one wreck uh, and it wasn't the worst one uh, when I was drunk, and I very well may have had it if, if I had not been drinking. So, alcohol, uh, it's never sent me to the hospital 
uh, with an injury. I have never been to a dry out clinic. As I say, never a DUI, never caused a, a, a problem with, with my job. I can always function. Uh, you know, when I needed to get out there and make money or whatever. But it was in the 1990s, and, and, and I'm really not, uh, I, I'm really not, it's going to sound like that, that I'm blaming someone else. But, but this does bear saying about alcoholics that I teamed up in the 1990s with this train wreck uh, of a uh, of a girlfriend that I met in uh, Eugene, Oregon is where we met, and uh, she was the single mother of a uh, of like an 18 month old baby. When we met, the woman was an absolute fucking train wreck. You know, she was a welfare mother. She was what was called a brittle diabetic. If you know what the fuck a brittle diabetic is, we think she probably had this thing called lupus, and she was a major, may suffered a, worse than I do, uh, bipolar. She so she was major, major bipolar. Uh, her her swings, uh, particularly her manic swings. Uh, were, were, were worse than her, de my depressions were worse than hers, but her mania was worse than mine, and, you know, I always said whenever I got manic, I would just, you know, reactivate my real estate license and go out and make $100,000 in a year selling real estate, and while, while she went absolutely bad, so the woman, she was batshit crazy, she was physically uh, in a mess, and uh, n not surprisingly, she she kept right up with me with the drinking. That alcohol was was a major major factor in our relationship, and and she and we were raising a young child together. People don't realize, I don't think that I had a young child from age two to nine that I was basically this little girl's father. For seven years, uh, I, I was with uh, these two, the mother and the daughter. And I, I mean, uh, she, was, she was pretty much my kid. Uh, for seven years, we had absolutely no business raising a child and, uh, and, 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 and uh, we would usually start drinking uh, probably around 6 o'clock. And we would try to put the kid in bed, uh, you know, whenever, get rid of the kid so we could really tie it on. And, and, and then the other part, uh, I mean, this woman was an absolute nymphomaniac that uh, the, the, our, our relationship, <clears throat> which all together, uh, off and on for 12 years, but we were pretty much together for those seven years, and then some off and on stuff, uh, very erratic, uh, very volatile relationship, of course, the nasty fights, getting back together, but the sex w w was uh, was... Was it good sex? I mean, it depends on your definition of good sex. I, I mean, this woman, she would fuck anything. She would fuck anybody, anything. She was, you know, absolutely nasty. That uh, she liked getting drunk and getting nasty. And, 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 uh, and we just got darker and darker and darker. I, uh, I, 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 I mean, we got into shit that would, would probably gross out uh, a lot of people on Pornhub. You know, I, I mean, we were down, you, you, you know, in the, uh, in, in, you know, in the threesomes and the foursomes and the orgies and the good 
fucking god and, and, and uh, this is getting to be too much TMI but uh, it was all wrapped up together the alcohol the just just the fucking kinky kinky ass sex with this crazy woman uh, who would not say no to anything. Uh, she, she was game. The only thing we never did get into, we had no, no interest in the fucking whips and chains and the dungeons and all that shit. No fucking interest, either one of us. But other than that, uh, what the fuck, if it feels good, do it. Uh, and we did it. Uh, we, we did everything under the sun and it was always fueled by liquor uh, for, for, for some reason I guess because I was a younger man that uh, you know I, 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 uh, I could be absolutely loaded and, and be able to rise to the occasion there was no effect apparently on that uh, particular part of my body uh, so anyway it was this very, very, uh, I don't even know if I want to use the word toxic relationship. Uh, any relationship is a toxic relationship, but alcohol, it, 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 it was alcohol and sex. Uh, and we were, we were both batshit crazy. Uh, you know, it's uh, I was dealing with all of this crazy space alien bullshit, uh, which she didn't quite know. She, she never knew what to make of my goddamn space alien. But she just she just rolled with it. Whatever, Hambone. Uh, if you if you're getting uh, abducted by space aliens, uh, leave my daughter out of it. Is all she had to ask me, and it, anyway, it, it, it was a fucking crazy few years, and uh, I, I I was getting completely out of control by uh, 1996. I need to check this battery. Okay, well, maybe the battery has a little more life. So what it was, what happened was, we were living here in a, outside of Gainesville, Florida. This woman still, I think, lives, I, th I think this crazy bitch, I think she's still like uh, about an hour and 20 minutes from right here, as far as I know. Uh, you might remember the... the <laughs> Anyway, uh, there the, the day we parted company due to a uh, due to a Humpty Dumpty tribe video was <laughs> a Humpty Dumpty tribe video that she did not appreciate. Finally, brought that uh, they put the final kibosh on, but I think she's still right up the road from me. Um, but anyway, we were living. Uh, out on uh, Lake Santa Fe outside of Gainesville in 1996, renting a house out there on the lake. Got a call from my mother in June of 1996. My mother also enjoyed a good drink. Uh, okay, His, his, his my, my mother uh, thoroughly enjoyed she Her drink was... Uh, was bourbon and coke. She always said, uh, when, you know, she had five kids. She, she always would laugh. She, she goes, she goes, Sam. I know when I'm coming to visit you, that I will get a, you know, a stiff drink where I don't have to sneak around and add more alcohol to my drinks. So my mama, I loved getting drunk with my mother. She, she was a hoot. So anyway. My mother was always a little bit of a hypochondriac, I thought, uh, that she was always a little bit of a hypochondriac. She had actually uh, gotten a uh, total hysterectomy at age uh, 42 uh, because I, I honestly don't know if she had cancer or they were worried about it, but they left her ovaries and she wanted them when she had her hysterectomy for whatever the concern was at age 42, she wanted them to yank the ovaries. 
she could not find a doctor. That would have been in what, 1968? To uh, to yank her ovaries, could not get a doctor to take out her ovaries. But anyway, she was cancer free for years and years and years, and we pretty much all forgotten about it. And then it was in June of 1996 that we got the call from my mother that she uh, had stage four ovarian cancer and all fucking hell blew up in, 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 in my life and in, in, in ours and uh, just uh, did, did, did my entire fucking life with that phone call uh, made, made a radical turn and so, uh, you know, deal mainly with my sister and is my sister and one of my brothers had died, but so I had a sister and two brothers still living in Atlanta and, and uh, I needed to be home. So I had to ditch the girlfriend that was, you know, she wanted to come, you know, bringing the kid. My, my mother's got fucking stage four cancer, and, and here was this batshit crazy nymphomaniac uh, with a, uh, with a, I guess uh, the kid was, how old was she, uh, eight or nine, anyway, uh, and it wasn't going to happen. I had to run her back up to Eugene, Oregon to get her out of my fucking hair, and I just said, darling, I have got to uh, deal with this. So I, I got back to Atlanta during the 1996 Olympics, you, you know, when they had the big bombing. I was actually down there in downtown Atlanta during that bombing. So I got back right there. I had nothing to do. I am not the, 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 the 96 Olympic bomber. That was not me. And... Uh, so anyway, all, 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 all hell broke loose. And there began the, uh, from July of 96 till my mother died on March 14th of 1997. I have told that story several times about the death of my mother. I was a uh, alone with her that night. I'm not going to get off on that story. But anyway, so I get back to Atlanta in uh, July while we were all trying to figure out what the fuck, whether she, uh, are you, whether she was getting the surgery, the, uh, the radiation, the chemo, all of this shit. Uh, we were having all of these family meetings and stuff and, and trying to figure out what the fuck and uh, we, we, uh, it, 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 it was living hell. But the bottom line was we were absolutely not going, I, 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 I mean, whatever happened, it was going to happen at home. Whether she recovered or whether she died, it, it was going to happen at home. And uh, both of my brothers were very busy with their lives and uh, stuff. And it pretty much fell to me and my sister that uh, the two of us were clearly going to be my mother's caretaker. And uh, during, with, with, with all of this, my fucking drinking was still completely out of control. I need to keep checking this battery. Okay, so maybe I get... So anyway, so my birthday was uh, September 22nd. I was born on September 22nd. So September 22nd of 1996 uh, was my birthday and my mother was scheduled to uh i've talked about the about this before uh, so she would so she decided 
to go the full fucking Monty. My sister and I were horrified. My two brothers, you goddamn straight. You're, you're, you're going to get every So anyway, uh, my sister and I were both horrified that she was going to surgery, the radiation, the chemo, and it was clear that my sister and I were going to be the caretakers. We were the ones who were going to deal with this. And I was in absolutely no fucking shape to deal with this. The, the, this whole thing just completely, you know, I was uh, suffering severe depression as it was. Uh, I, 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 I was a raging alcoholic. Uh, my mother was, was getting ready, my, my girlfriend, and of course, meaning my, obviously, uh, my, my sexual outlet was living in the opposite corner of the country. I, I, I knew that I was getting ready not to have sex uh, for months, if not a, I, it, it just, just uh, it, my, my, my entire fucking life uh, fell apart. And so I was up, we had a little cabin in North Georgia, in the mountains of North Georgia, that I actually pretty much built myself. So I would go up there, you, 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 you know, to get out of Atlanta. This was before my mother had the surgery. And so she was scheduled in, I think, early to mid-October. So it was the night of September 22nd. It was my 37th birthday, and I hit rock bottom on my 37th birthday. I was, it was, it was one of the darkest nights of my soul of my entire life. And uh, so I just decided to uh, kill myself, that I was going to kill myself, that I, I couldn't deal with this. I could not face in, in the fucking shape I was in between uh, it just uh, my, my whole fucking life had fallen apart. I, I was in a major, major clinical depression. I should have been in the hospital uh, or in rehab or both. Uh, and what I did was my, my mother had also from a whole other thing where she had been in a bad wreck my mother was addicted to these painkillers called Darvon. Anybody who has ever read the book Final Exit, Final Exit, uh, about how to kill yourself, he put whoever that, I can't remember who that fellow was, my hero who wrote that book, said there is no human being on this planet who can survive eating 52 Darvon. So I had actually been sneaking Darvon out of my mother's supply. When I got there in July, I started getting my suicide pack together. So I had actually, I had gathered together 52 Darvon pills that I had snuck out of my mother's stash of painkillers course I was drunk as fucking shit up there by myself in that cabin. It is unbelievable how often I that that there I was on my birthday alone uh, at the end of a dirt road in, in, in a little cabin at the end of a dirt road by myself on my 37th birthday drunk as shit uh, uh, in, in, in a rock bottom depression, my mother getting ready to go through this shit, and so I just decided that was it. That was the night I was going to kill myself. <clears throat> so I wrote the suicide note. I actually wrote the suicide note and just sat there getting drunker and drunker by myself in this lonely little cabin at the end of this dirt road in the North Georgia mountains. And uh, so I was going, you know, to drink this entire fucking bottle of tequila 
uh, it wasn't a, you know, it was a 300, probably a three, probably a 375 milliliter. Anyway, so uh, I was going to get roaring drunk on the tequila and eat those 52 Darvine, go to sleep, and never wake up. And I wrote out the suicide note mainly, uh, mainly to my mother, or to my mother and sister, and, and just saying, I, you, 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 you know, mom and Mary, um, you know, guys, I, 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 I'm, I'm sorry, but I, I, I'm, I'm simply not up to this task. I'm not up to this task, what the universe is asking of me. I, I just, I, I, I'm not the man for this job. My life is a fucking train wreck. A train wreck. Uh, which is exactly what my fucking life was on uh, my 37th birthday. And I was about an hour away from... Uh, from uh, eating those goddamn dark, I had every intention of killing myself that night. And uh, amazingly, this was, you know, uh, was it before? So somehow there was a phone. I can't remember that I, would I have had a cell phone in 1990? Anyway, there was a phone, unbelievably, in that cabin. And, uh, you know, my mother, I, I didn't even get a call from my mother uh, on, on, my, on my damn birthday. She had problems bigger than my birthday. It was about 11 o'clock at night and the phone rings. I mean, my girlfriend never called me. My mother never called me. Uh, and I picked up the phone, drunk as shit, and it was my sister. And what, what, what my sister does, you know, kind of a running joke, is every birthday I, she calls and I pick up the phone, Happy birthday to you, happy birthday to you, happy birthday dear Sam, happy birthday to you. I'm sitting here with a fucking suicide note here. And about uh, maybe two shots of tequila left, 52 Darvine, planning to be dead in one hour, and my sister is singing happy birthday to me. Uh, so, how are you doing up there? Uh, is it beautiful up there? You know, the late September in the North Georgia mountains. And, uh, and, and and I said, darling, I, I said, I got, I got to admit, I'm not having a very good night, is uh, what I told her. And uh, anyway, so I had that conversation with my sister, and she just said, you know, uh, you know, basically, we're counting on you. And that that was the last drink I had in six fucking years. We're counting on you. And that was it. The 52 Darvon were not eaten. The uh, suicide note obviously was gotten rid of. And uh, I had my last shot of tequila September 22nd, 1996. 
and it was, I wish I had the date. I had been, I moved to Austin. I moved to Austin uh, in October of 2001, and, and, and I lived in Austin, Texas, which has, it did then, and I think it probably still does have the highest uh, alcoholic, per, you know, percentage of people in town are, are drunks. And, but I made it for like two years drinking my fucking cranberry juice and running around with all of these crazy pickers and stoners and shit and drinking my fucking cranberry juice while everybody else around me. So we were at, uh, Jovita's Mexican Cantina on South 1st Street uh, as in 2002, I wish I could remember the date, and all my friends were ordering margaritas, and I was looking at, and I was sitting there drinking my fucking cranberry juice, and uh, waitresses, you know, handing out margaritas to everybody, and I called that waitress over there, and I said, darling, I said, I'm going to say something to you that I have not said in six years. Well, these waitresses, they've heard it all, and she was waiting for this pickup line, and she goes, what is that? And I said, I pointed to a mark, I said, bring me one of those. And she goes, what? She goes, you, you want me to bring you a margarita? And uh, I said, yes. And you should have seen the look in all my friends' faces because they knew about my past. What a fucking drunk that I had been in the past. And they were like, look like, oh shit. What is getting ready to happen? And so the waitress goes, you want me to bring you a margarita? I said, yes, I want you to bring me a margarita. And... Uh, she brings me this margarita. I tell you guys, <laughs> I, I went like this. I took one sip of that margarita. Oh, God. And, and I just felt it going down. I, I felt my bronchial tubes like opening up. And what it was, it was like picking up a conversation with an old friend that you haven't seen in six years. And uh, I drank that one and, I, and it felt pretty good. And I got one more. I had two margaritas. This was 22 years ago. I had two margaritas pretty much every single night of my life for the past 22 years I have had two margaritas and uh, this is what I was telling this 38 year old woman that uh, I said I had to knock it off for six fucking years I had to fucking knock it off that I had a the 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 most important job of my entire life and I had to be there for my mother and my sister <clears throat> and there was no room for Jose Cuervo uh, and, 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 and that fucking setup and uh, I cold turkey I did the worst job of my life I went six years to uh, before I, I got to the point where I could start drinking again. I have never been drunk in 22 fucking years. I have over 700 drinks a year. Uh, alcohol, well not beer, but margaritas are a major enjoyment in my life. They are one of the, it's the, one of the major ways I get out there and enjoy it while I still can. Uh, you just have to train yourself to stop after two of them. And, and as I was telling this young woman, I said, darling, I, 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 I said, this is going to be the hardest fucking battle you've ever fought in your life. 
Uh, you know, and then say if you ever need to shoulder to lean on, you know. Uh, and I said it's probably gonna take five or six years and that I was your age and you will know it when you are ready to enjoy alcohol without abusing it so I drink 365 nights a year I don't know if I'm a fucking alcoholic or not uh, I alcohol two shots of tequila or two beers or two glasses or whatever uh, I find is, is, is one of the few enjoyments that I allow myself and, and I cannot imagine not having alcohol. I enjoy it. It does not negatively affect my life. It enhances my life. It's just called stopping after two dreams. So, uh, Michael Campy, I don't know. All kidding aside, if, if, if I am still meet the legal definition of an alcoholic, I'm a fucking alcoholic, and I'm not embarrassed to say it. Uh, but anyway, that is my story, and I'm sticking to it. And, uh... Let's have a toast to the people who can drink uh, two drinks a day and stop. My guys.